Today, you're gonna learn how to split stuff with the help of splitting.js. Oh, and hey, I'd like to point out this video's awesome sponsor, Skillshare.com, which offers thousands of classes in design, coding, business, and more. For instance, you're about to watch my video that covers a JavaScript topic, but you could watch this full course from scratch at Skillshare. Now, Skillshare is just 10 bucks a month, but if you're the first 200 students to use my very exclusive link below in the description here in YouTube, then you get the first two months free. All right, so let's get started. Hey everyone, Gary Simon of Corsetro. So today we're gonna to take a look at splitting.js. So what exactly is that? Well, the best way to describe it is just to show it here. Um, this is the official site and there's a demos link here that'll take you to um, CodePen with some different examples. So the first thing that it does is uh, it's based on text or, or type effects. And as you can see, there's a lot of different examples of what you can do with this thing. So what's a glitch effect? All right, that's pretty cool. Wiggle effect, bounce. Basically anything that you can animate using CSS keyframes, you could do here very easily with the help of splitting.js. You can also even work with images and do cool stuff like this. All right, so we're gonna take a look at that and how to get it integrated and how to you know create your own animations um, using this with our the project that I've been working on for the uh, upcoming YouTube channel. And we just did a, um, just two days ago, a landing page. So we're gonna work with that as a basis and I'll link a GitHub URL for you to access that. All right, so for today's question, what is the best beginner's JavaScript course that you've tried and learned from? for those of you obviously who've been trying to learn JavaScript. All right, so just share your resource here. It could be a Udemy link, it could be a YouTube video, uh, it could be anything really. Uh, just something that, you know, if there's, there's one resource that really stuck out for you to, that helped you learn something specific, just go ahead and mention it and it may denote it as spam, so I'll approve uh, any reasonable links or whatever. All right, so let's go ahead, uh, make sure you subscribe here first and let's get started. All right, so this is the project here that uh, we covered a couple tutorials ago. And basically, we just have some regular indexed HTML stuff. You can grab the GitHub link. Um, hopefully, I'll remember to add that. Uh, although, you don't necessarily have to just to gain from this. Um, uh, it's nice to follow along, but you can always understand it by watching. So let me hit watch SAS here and also go live. And we'll just check out what we have by default. All right, so this is the, the little kind of just half landing page thing that we did. And let's say for instance, we wanted to take this text and do something interest with, interesting with it on either a word by word basis or an individual character basis. So that's what um, a great use case for um, this splitting JS would be, all right? So first thing, um, I'm gonna get up uh, the splitting JS documentation, all right? And right here, we can see there's a guide. All right, so this is where you're gonna spend much of your time uh, trying to understand uh, what exactly you can do with it. And specifically, um, let's just get started obviously by installing it. So you can install it either through the Node Package Manager, which requires Node.js, um, and that's the most pr preferable way to use it. Um, although there's so many different ways to set projects up these days, uh, I'm not gonna cover this. I'm just gonna use a CDN, which is great for just a quick way to get up and running. So the first thing you need to do is I uh, will go ahead and take these three lines and I'm going to include them right up here. All right, and then at the very bottom, the second step, we add this just uh, at the bottom of the body tag. And so we'll go back here real quick, and then of course put it right here. All right, great, so that's the first step. It's ready to be used. Um, the next step, all right, so it really depends on you know what we wanna do. So basic usage, obviously, Right here, it outlines the fact that um, you need to add this data hyphen splitting attribute to whatever it is that you know you want this effect to be placed upon. 
All right, so they're also going to show you, you know, what happens to the DOM after, you know, this is added. And we'll take a look at that uh, right now. So we're just going to add this. And go back here. And I'm going to hit Control-B to get rid of that sidebar, by the way. And let's add it to our H1 element. All right, so you can see it has level and up. So let's save it. And we have automatic browser reloading over here. And nothing happens, even if I refresh, nothing happens. There's no animation that's placed on upon it. That's that's up to us, essentially. But what happens, though, is if I hit Control-Shift-I, and we go to Elements, and we select our text, we'll now see that we have this H1 class with a fall down, which is what we gave it, fall down, and then also some other classes were injected into it, words, chars and splitting so that that's the splitting js adding that into there for us we can also see these spans you know these spans don't exist in the html that we're working with but what it, it does is it it, uh, it creates a span with a class of word also with a data word uh, attribute as well as style and also inside of it each character I uh, has its own its own span class. So now we can use that and do whatever we want with it in CSS. So that's the great part about this. So now we have full control of all these individual elements. Um, so let's go ahead and actually make it do something because at this point, uh, the the work of you know the script splitting JS is done. It's up to us now to do something interesting with it in terms of CSS. All right, so. Let's go to our main SAS file and we'll come down here just at the bottom. And then uh, let's say, for instance, we want to animate the characters, like um, just make them come up or fade in and, or whatever. All right, so what we'll do is we'll reference our fall down class and then words, because fall down and words are together in the same element. And then we'll reference char for character. So that's the individual character, um, as you saw in the inspector. So we'll put in an animation. We'll say slide down, or actually, yeah, slide down, um, two seconds forwards. And then we'll also put in an animation. Well, we won't do the delay right now. I'll do that in a second. But I just want to demonstrate something. So keyframes, um, slide down from, and we'll put transform, translate Y. 125 percent all right and then also opacity zero and then two we'll go ahead and just copy these real quick we'll say translate y is going to be zero and then opacity will be one also we're going to add opacity zero here as well all right so <clears throat> At this point, it would be a good idea for me to split. I didn't save it yet, but I want to split the editor just so we can see what's happening at a more real-time basis here without me switching back and forth to Windows and all that stuff. All right, so let's go ahead and save this and see what happens. So what we need to do for in order to get this to work is add in an animation delay. And that's going to be, we're going to use a calc function for this. <clears throat> and the reason being is I, uh, when s splitting JS and we add, we add this, this data splitting attribute here, it will give us access to real quickly. I'll show you one second. We're going to make this a 0.5, a half second delay plus a 0.1 second delay between each of the characters multiply by variable so we we're get a very we get access to a variable which is what I was alluding to um, and then we're gonna put char index all right so I was just scratching my head like hell wondering why the animation wasn't working correctly and that is because um, after tinkering tinkering around for this for like 15 minutes um, I realized that based on their um, the, the files we pasted here they have source for link URL style sheet and it needs to be href all right, so let's uh, save that. There we go. All right, so now uh, we could do a few other things. Uh, so for instance, going back to this guide here, we can see that uh, the plugins we have um, by default characters 
or chars, um, that's the default uh, mode or, or the value for this section right here. So this right here is the same as putting uh, data splitting equals chars. But let's say if we wanted access to the words, for instance, um, what we can then do if we wanted to animate it on a word by word basis is, again, when we save this, make sure you save um, control shift I, we can now see we have access just to the words and not the characters itself. And so now it's a matter of just understanding, um, you know, the, the order in which these, um, the classes are specified. So we have word and the parent container is fall down words and splitting. So for instance, if we want to, to uh, change this up just as a per word basis, we have to change this as well over here to word index for a variable. So now we save this, and now our two words that we have are coming in. And we can also adjust this so that level up bro, you'll see it'll work for every word. Although that looks kind of bad. There we go, let's refresh that. And so now let's just play around with this more. Um, let's go back to uh, the fact that this will be just a character by character basis. So we're going back to characters, so this is char um actually i could just yeah char and then also how are i we change this to char i think it's plural yeah nope it's singular sorry about that now let's uh, save this make sure it works all right um let's change this to positive so now it's going to slide up all right um yeah let's get rid of that bro i'm not gonna that's kind of silly all right so now we can do other things just to spice it up. Um, so for instance, going in our keyframes, the two, we'll put in font size 0.5 EM. Let me uh, get everything. I'm gonna save this as I add each property. All right, so going from large to small. Uh, background, we'll say black. All right, then we'll save, uh, we we'll make the color yellow. And then we'll do something like padding five pixels. All right, and then we'll display block on this for now. That's not gonna change much. And then what I wanna do is we're going to transform everything so remember i'm talking about you know this whole slant concept uh for the, my future youtube channel um probably confused if you haven't been paying for following along but i'm going to be launching launching a second youtube channel called slant on uh guitar and metal guitar and stuff like that and slant picking is one of those things to get speed anyhow slant i'm trying to reinforce that through different aesthetics on the site so let's try to slant this text a little bit so we'll do that with, uh, on on the uh, character snope and we'll do that outside of there we want not just the characters to rotate we want the words themselves so we'll put transform on the words class and we'll say uh, rotate z negative seven degrees so we'll save that and the, the, it gets all messed up uh, in terms of orientation. So we have to put transform origin 0%. There we go. And then we can also, just for the hell of it, trans, uh, transform that as well. So to do that, we'll just get up here in our paragraph area. And I'm going to copy and paste the same thing right here just these two lines. All right, <laughs> kind of silly. And then I will also add an animation just to fade it in. So um, I'll do animation, fade in, one second linear, 1.3 seconds forwards. All right, and then I uh, will set opacity by default to zero. And then we'll define our keyframes fade in animation and it's just going to go to opacity one so let's save that there you go cool and we could also do other stuff i uh, we're using uh, as you could see 
Uh, this forwards right here, let's change that to a cubic bezier. And this is real fun. This is a cool tool. Cubic bezier. There we go. And I'm just going to do something like this. And we'll copy this value right here, or this right here. I'm not sure if this goes to my um, clipboard. No, it doesn't. Um, there we go. Now we'll put this right after forwards. There we go. All right, so there we go. All right, so hopefully you found that useful. Make sure you answer today's question, which is what is the best beginner's JavaScript course that you've tried? Go ahead and mention it in the comments and I'll approve it. And I'll see you guys soon. Goodbye.